So, uh, so our last talk of the uh, of the evening, just before we go to the uh, telescopes, is going to be given again by uh, Brian Day, and uh, he's going to give us a tour of the uh, moon. So, uh, and be show you, showing you uh, some of the things you're about to see. At the uh, surface of the moon, and we are looking at a mountain range. Uh, this rugged terrain right here is the Apennine mountain range on the surface of the moon. Uh, it's a tall mountain range uh, and you can see that uh, it's got some interesting very flat terrain just above it and to the right. So what you're seeing above and to the right is one of those lava plains or impact basins that Jack Burns was talking about earlier. It's a very, very flat area of lava, and uh, you can see that, that's the sea, that's the Sea of Serenity, but then this rugged area here, we have, uh, we have the Apennine Mountains. It's a tall mountain range. It gets up to, oh, probably better than 16,000 feet, and the interesting thing about uh, the Apennine Mountains and about mountain ranges on the moon in general is, uh, we're gonna switch mics here, okay. The interesting thing about mountain ranges on the moon in general is unlike on the Earth, they are not formed by colliding plates, but actually a completely different type of This actually represents the ring, part of the ring of a very large impact basin. Uh, just off the uh, left-hand side of the screen and to the night side of the moon is a huge impact basin called the Imbrium Basin. It's about 1,200 kilometers in diameter. And the Apennine Mountains represent part of the ring of mountains around the edge of that basin. Now if you take a look at this, we're looking at just a portion of the Apennine Mountains. A lot of it extends down and to the left into the shadowed nighttime side of the moon. So the actual length of the mountain range is about 600 kilometers. We're looking at the northern tip. And as you look at the northern tip of the Apennine Mountains, just on the left hand side there, there's kind of a dark shadowed bay that is where the Apollo 15 landed. I'm going to try and get that centered in the field of view here. So this is where the Apollo 15 mission went. Now as we head north, there's a little bit of a break and then we come to another mountain range. These are the Carpathian Mountains. And these get up to about three and a half kilometers in height. And again, they form part of the ring around the edge of this giant Imbrium Basin. We're gonna follow that ring around to another set of mountains. Now we're into the uh, set of mountains called the Alps. You can see the Alps in the middle of the field of view there. And if you look very carefully, going through the Alps, you'll see a long linear gouge going from upper right to lower left. That is called the Alpine Valley. And uh, it is about 165 in length. People initially thought that this might have been caused by flying debris gouging out part of the material, flying debris from the impact basin, from the Imbrium impact, gouging out material. But now we have a better understanding and we think that this is actually a feature called a graben, an area where you have two parallel faults and the land in between drops down. We have an example on, here on Earth, we have a number of examples very similar to this. In fact, right here in California, if you've ever driven along Highway 395 
east of the Sierras, between the Sierras and the White Mountains and Inyo Mountains, that is a graven. And that long, beautiful valley that you drive through on Highway 395 and you look up and you see the steep slopes of the Sierras and the steep slopes of the White Mountains. That's probably similar to the view you would have if you were driving through the Alpine Valley here on the moon. Very, very, very interesting area. So we see craters again. These are impact craters all across the face of the moon. There was a large debate about the nature of craters. Many people thought initially that they might be from volcanoes. But then as time went by, we came to the understanding that most, most craters on the moon are caused by impacts. But right now, in the center of the field of view, I am putting in a small crater, a small crater right in the center called Huygenus. And Huygenus is only 10.6 kilometers in diameter. But it's interesting because it doesn't have a rim. And we think that this crater may be more volcanic in origin rather than an impact. And if you look very carefully, you will see a crack, what looks like a crack in the lunar surface, extending from Hygenus going to the right and from Hygenus going to the upper left. This big, beautiful crack, this is called the Hygenus Rill. And this is about 220 kilometers in length. But that section that goes from Hygenus up and to the left, if you look at it very carefully through a telescope on a good steady night, you'll see it is not just a single crack, but it's a line of pit craters. So again, these seem to be volcanic related features. And again, if you have ever been to Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii, and you go to Volcanoes National Park, and you drive along the chain of craters road, those are pit craters. And those are good analogs for what we may be seeing here, extending up and to the left of the crater Hygenus, forming this Hygenus Rill. Very fascinating area. Continuing to the south, we're going to go along the near the terminator of the moon. And here we come to a beautiful crater. You can see it has an example of a central peak in the middle of it there. And so imagine when an uh, impact happens, you can get a rebound of material. The, the rock becomes fluid. And think of, think of, you've seen pictures of slow motion drops of liquid into water, and you have a central rebound splash. You can picture how that central peak could form in a rebound. So we're looking here at the crater Albategnius. It's 136 kilometers in diameter. Now we're going to head back north again. And what I'd like to do is wrap up. Let's see here. We're going to move out into the Sea of Tranquility. Exposure down just a bit. And so now the dark area you see above on the upper part of the screen is the Sea of Tranquility. And now right in the center, on the lower edge of the Sea of Tranquility, right in the center of the screen, is the spot where in 1969, Neil Armstrong took that famous first step on the moon. So, again, 
We take a moment to thank Neil Armstrong and the astronauts and the many thousands of people who made that first flight to the moon possible. So with that, I'd like to suggest that you adjourn to the telescopes out in the telescope field, learn from these knowledgeable amateur astronomers, and enjoy your own personal exploration of the surface of the moon. Thank you all very, very much. And thank you, Brian. And uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out for International Observe the Moon Night. I want to thank all of our speakers once again. If you could please give them a round of applause. I want to thank the Ames Health and Safety Fire Security and Logistics. It takes a lot of work to put on an event like this. I want to thank our, uh, our local coordinating committee, Doris Dow, Shirley Berthold, Brian Day, Ashkan Najad, Greg Bennett, and Joe Benafra. And then once again, a big round of applause for all the amateur astronomers who uh, volunteered their time and telescopes. So you, you can look through. So thanks again, and uh, please come again to International Observe the Moon Night next year. Thank you.